here's a classic integral from uh, calculus that I'd like to talk about today. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus x squared dx. And sometimes instead of going from zero to infinity, people will phrase this as minus infinity to infinity. So it's the integral of one over one plus x squared dx. X goes from minus infinity to infinity. Somewhat surprisingly, uh, the answer ends up being pi. Right? The value of this integral is pi. I think that is surprising, though it's less surprising when you uh, maybe think about how you'd attack this integral in a calculus course. You'd, do something involving trigonometry and the inverse tangent function. So maybe the, the pi here isn't, isn't such a surprise. Well, I don't want to attack this integral in the usual way that you'd attack this integral in the context of a uh, calculus course. I'm going to attack this integral in the context of a complex analysis course where we're going to leverage the residue theorem to be able to calculate this, this integral. Now, to do this, uh, well, to do the residue theorem, I have to integrate over some kind of uh, more more complicated curve. Right now, what I what I really want to do is just integrate along the the real axis. Right, I'm trying to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. But instead, uh, to set this up in a complex analysis setting, I'm going to integrate over this particular contour. I'm going to move along the uh, real axis for a while, and then I'm going to head up along this semicircle back to my starting point. So to give some names to this, this point here will be at minus big R on the real axis. I'm, I'm thinking of big R as a very positive number, so negative big R is a very, very negative number. And it's, uh, well, it's a semicircle here, so it should be over here on the other side, uh, big R, right? And I'm going to integrate from minus R to R along the real axis, and I'm going to follow this semicircular uh, contour back to my starting point. And, let me put these arrows so I remember to integrate from minus r to big R and then follow this semicircle back. Let me also give a name to this semicircular piece. I'll call that piece gamma. Okay, so now I can set this up. Uh, I want to integrate over these. Uh, I've really broken it up as two pieces. So it'll be the integral from minus big R to big R of 1 over 1 plus, let's write z since it's a complex number, z squared dz plus the integral over uh, this semicircular piece, so the integral over gamma of 1 over 1 plus z squared dz. All right, so this is the integral around this uh, <laughs> piecewise smooth curve. But my integrand here, this function I'm integrating is 1 over 1 plus z squared. Let's record that fact as well. So f of z is 1 over 1 plus z squared. And its denominator uh, vanishes when z is plus or minus i, which means this function has uh, some, some poles. It's got a pole at uh, i and a pole at minus i. Now, the residue theorem tells me that when I integrate around this closed contour, it's the same as 2 pi i times, well, the residues of the enclosed pole. So in this case, there's just the one pole, the pole at i. So I've got to multiply this times uh, the residue of my function f at the point i. So pretty good. I mean, we're, we're definitely using complex analysis to, to, try to try to do at least an integral. Not immediately obvious how this is going to help us with our original uh, just calculus integral, but we're making progress. Now I've got to, uh, got to try to attack this piece. I want to try to compute what is the, what is the residue uh, of, of this uh, function at, at i. So I'm trying to compute the residue at i of, I'll write it out again, 1 over 1 plus, I'll write, I'll write x squared here. I really should probably write z squared. Oh, I can't help myself. I've got to write z squared there. Okay, 1 over 1 plus z squared. Now I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite uh, 1 over 1 plus z squared in the following way. I'll write this as 1 over, uh, I'll write it as z minus i times 1 over z plus i, all right? Just because z minus i times z plus i is uh, 1 plus z squared. Okay, so now uh, I'm in pretty good shape because this term here, 1 over z minus i, that's the thing that's got a pole at i. This thing here, 1 over z plus i, that doesn't have a pole at i. So this is the same as, well, the residue at i of 1 over z minus i just times the value of this thing uh, when z is i. So this is 1 over, just replacing z with i, i plus i. Now I know the residue of 1 over z minus i at i. That is just 1. So this is 1 times, I'll maybe write this in the most dramatic way possible, of 1 over 2i. 
Okay, so we, we've computed the residue of one over one plus z squared when z is i. It's one over two i. Let's use that up here. So this is two pi i times, well, it's one over two i. Now I'll cancel my different looking twos. I'll cancel these i's and all I am left with is this pi. So in the end, what I have computed is that, well, the sum of these two integrals is, is pi. Now that doesn't seem exactly like what we wanted. I mean, we're trying to compute just the integral of one over one plus z squared dz from minus infinity to infinity. I've done this from minus big R to R and I've already gotten pi, but I do have this uh, you know, other piece here. So what we have to study now is sort of what happens to this, to this other piece. So let's try to do that now. Okay, so I want to try to compute, uh, well, something about the integral over the semicircular uh, contour of one over one plus z squared dz. And I'm taking the limit of this as big R goes to infinity. Well, what can I say about this? Uh, let me draw this picture again, just so I can think about it a little bit with the, uh, the geometry that's happening here. So the curve that I'm integrating over is this curve here. I called it gamma and it's a semicircle. It's really going from big R to minus big R. And the length of this curve, well, it depends on big R, right? It's, a, it's half of a circle. If it were the whole circle, it'd be two pi big R. It's just half the circle. So it's pi times, times big R. Now, can I say something about this, this integrand? Well, when I'm moving along uh, this, this curve gamma, along that curve, the size of z is big R. So in that case, I'd like to say something about the size of one over one plus z squared. This is no bigger than, uh, well, what? So in order to bound this from above, I wanna say something about how small the denominator could possibly be. And uh, well, how small could this be? I mean, z here is some complex number with absolute value big R. I'm, I'm adding one to it. So in the very worst case, as small as this could possibly be, would be uh, big R squared minus one. So I can actually bound this thing by one over big R squared minus one. Now, let me see what that says about this integral. That tells me that, uh, let me get rid of this limit for the time being. I can now control the size of this integral. This is no bigger than, well, how big can the integrand possibly be? It's one over r squared minus one times the length that I'm integrating over, which is pi times r. Now, what happens to this quantity in the limit, right? When r is very, very big, this r squared minus one term dominates. And what that tells me is that the limit as r goes to infinity of the integral over gamma of one over one plus z squared dz, in the limit, this is zero. So this is really great because what, what that tells me is that although I was integrating over this, uh, this, this closed contour, right, and we showed via the, uh, this, this residue computation, that if I integrate around this, this closed contour, I get pi. But if I let uh, big R get very, very large, if I look at this uh, in, in the limit as big R goes to infinity, well, this is then uh, still pi because you know it's just a constant, but the, the one integral, the, the integral over the semicircle, that ends up going to zero, right? So I'm, I'm integrating over this curve and when r is big r is big enough to enclose the pole right this is just equal to pi so that tells me that uh and, and then that tells me the limit of of this of this integral is just is just pi but when i then integrate over this semicircle in the limit the integral over that semicircle is zero which tells me that the limit uh, of minus r to big R of one over one plus uh, z squared dz, that must actually be equal to, to pi because this uh, term in the limit doesn't contribute at all. So this is really an argument that uh, the integral of minus r to big R of one over one plus z squared dz, as r tends to infinity, that thing is tending to pi, which then is a justification via complex analysis that the integral 
uh, from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. x is a real number here. That's equal to pi. 